Hi everyone, Cedar Lee here, and I'm going to show you how I made this 12 inch by 36 inch oil painting. You can see I started with a toned canvas, which I toned with this warm golden color, um, which is a mix of uh, titanium white, cadmium yellow, and I believe a little bit of burnt sienna. And then I sort of sketched some pencil lines onto the canvas to get my basic composition, very, very basic. And what I'm doing here with the white is I'm painting in the background. I'm painting everything that is behind these main big tree trunks that are in the foreground. And I'm doing thicker white in some places and thinner in other places. And where I'm painting the white thinner is where some of that toned canvas underneath is going to show through and sort of glow with a golden color. And here I am painting the edges. Um, I paint around my, my whole painting around the edges of the canvas as I go. I want my image to wrap around the edges and I touch up the edges at the end. But if I paint the edges as I go, then it's less to do at the end. And here I'm thinking about what I'm going to do next. And I come in with just a tiny bit of cadmium yellow, um, still mixed with white. And what I'm doing is I'm working from light to dark with my colors. So I started with white, add some yellow glow in there where I want it. And then I'm going to do the same thing with a tiny bit of sap green. And it's very light because it has so much white mixed in with it. Now you can start to see as I'm doing this with the green, some shapes of tree branches emerging, but I'm not painting tree branches at this point. Right now what I'm doing is I'm looking at my reference photo and I'm just blocking in the shapes that I see. Now I'm going to come in with a little bit of alizarin crimson and add some little hints of tree trunks in the background. I want these to just be hints of tree trunks. I want them to be sort of soft and hazy and stay in the background, so I'm keeping them soft and blurry. Now this is oil paint, so it's all very wet and sticky, and each color that I apply is getting blended in with the colors underneath, especially that white. So that's why all these colors are very soft and pastel right now. And now I'm getting ready to block in the darker colors of the tree trunks in the foreground um, with alizarin crimson, some cadmium yellow, and some Payne's gray. And the whole while I'm blending with the white and with the colors underneath. And again, I'm painting the bottom edge now so that I don't have to do as much color matching later. Time to think for a minute about my next steps. And here is where I throw my reference photo away and I just start making things up as I go. And I'm thinking about adding some of the main branches in off of these big tree trunks. And I'm thinking about where I want those branches to go. So my light source is the sun in the center of the painting and way in the background. So the light is diffused as the sun is shining through this thick forest. And I want the whole forest to be glowing with that sunlight. So 
I'm keeping in mind where the sun is to determine the light and dark parts of my branches. So once I get these main branches placed where I want them, I'm going to start thinking about adding a little more detail and texture into the tree trunks and the foliage. When people ask if I paint from photos or from my imagination, I always say both because I start with the photograph to sort of get the composition how I want it and then at a certain point, I just stop looking at the photo completely and I just make it up. So I decided to call it a day and then this is uh, me coming back another day. And the paint is still quite wet, but it's a little bit drier. It's dry enough that things won't automatically become like over blended together and if I don't want them to. So it's a couple days later, I come back and now I'm refining the area in the center where the sun is shining through the most. And it's making some of those branches light up and even some of them disappear in the bright light. Now I start adding a few little hints of foliage, add some leaves onto the trees. And it's very subtle, it's just little blobs of color, it's not anything too detailed. And now I'm adding some highlights to make the this main tree trunk in the center look a little rougher. And you can see the colors that I'm working with here are some sap green, some alizarin crimson, some cadmium yellow, and some white. So I end up with like a lot of pink, gray. There's a, there's some Payne's gray in there. Branching those little branches out with some smaller branches coming out the ends. Right now I'm just kind of letting my eye go wherever and now and adding detail where I feel like it needs something. So adding more branches reaching across the canvas. So it's starting to feel like this tree is reaching its arms out like it's basking in the sun. Now I'm adding little spots of white and then outlining these negative shapes between the tree branches. And what I'm going for is a representational painting that incorporates a lot of abstraction. So when you look at the details up close, it's almost like just an abstract painting. But then when you look at the whole thing, you get a sense of realism. And the reason that I'm able to do this is because I threw that photo away. I'm not looking at it anymore. Now I'm just playing with the paint a lot. And if you really look at what I'm doing, it's pretty wild. The colors are these bright, wild colors that you don't actually see in real life in the forest. There's a bunch of loose brush strokes and scribbly lines and shapes and patterns in there. And I want it to look like paint. I want you to see those brush strokes and that thick texture and how I was playing with shapes and colors. It almost looks like stained glass in a few places.
Here I'm working with a very tiny brush, comparatively tiny brush, to add smaller details in, thinner branches. And finally, I start coming in with some super dark lines to add in some contrast and make this beautiful glowing light look even more dramatic. You can see when I start to add this very dark, almost black color onto the branches, it really makes them pop out from the background. And I just keep adding little details until it feels more or less done. There's never a point when it's really done. You just have to kind of call it. You don't want to take it too far, um, especially because I want to keep that sort of loose painterly feeling. I don't want it to be too tight. And here I'm going for a pop of bright yellow in the corner there and adding some of the tree branches in the foreground to give it a more three-dimensional look. Come in with those black lines. It's not actually black, it's a uh, Payne's gray mixed with alizarin crimson, so it's kind of a dark purple. Pop, pop. Then at some point I say, okay, it's done, I'm going to sign it now. Sign my name. And then, of course, after I finished this painting, I, after I signed it, I ended up fiddling with it for quite some time before I actually left it alone. I always um, try not to mess with it too much, but I always do a little bit even after I've signed it. And then the finished painting, I titled it feeling the sun partly because it looks like the trees to me are feeling the sun they're reaching their arms up and and just feeling that warm sun shining down on them and partly because the viewer you it feels like you're standing in the middle of these woods sort of surrounded by this open bright space that's created by all that glowing light that i created in the background so you are also feeling the sun. So I hope you enjoyed watching this process and maybe you're inspired to paint now and maybe you just think it's cool to see what goes on behind the scenes here. So thanks for watching.